Well, this took almost a long time, like almost a week. Now, I mentioned this guy in my most recent video about debunking the authoritarians that wanted to ban porn. This is Ben Shapiro. He is the intellectual on the right. And intellectual is used way, way too loosely when you refer to him. He is the new darling of the right, even though he is no different from them, and he's also fucking stupid as well, and he's very backwards, which is why I affectionately call him Regressive Ben. Now, how bad is he? Well, he's the same old conservative as you always see. They are, he's batshit insane on economics, he's batshit insane on foreign policy, he's never met a war he's never liked, he is a full-blown neocon, he believe, and this is how backwards he is socially. He doesn't believe in climate change, he is racist against Palestinians, and he calls anyone that criticizes Israel, and even himself, anti-Semitic. Always. He is a full-blown race baiter. He thinks abortion is evil, he thinks gay marriage is wrong, he thinks drugs are evil, and of course in the last video, he thinks porn is evil, and of course he did a blog over a decade ago where he advocated banning it. And he is a religious fundamentalist who uses his emotions very, very often when he makes his arguments, as he claims to be um, facts over feelings, he is an overt hypocrite. And as you're going to see in this video, he is also an authoritarian who wants to dictate how people live their lives. So this was over a month ago I found it because it took me a bit to find the video because around like last week it was the when the Amazing Atheist did an awesome video destroying this fucking shitty video which I went on it oh my god for being a far right um, channel that's on it's got like 70% dislikes which was awesome. So the video's topic was Ben thinks if you don't have kids, you are selfish. And as someone who doesn't have kids and plans to probably never, I thought it would be a smart idea to take this regressive shit down once and for all. Along with hopefully taking down his bullshit about, about Medicare for All, which he lied about so badly his videos got overwhelmingly disliked. So here we go, I'm going to play probably the whole entire video unless there's things I need to cut out that are irrelevant, so here we go. Now, speaking of substantive issues, I want to talk about a substantive issue that very few people are going to talk about today. And that is the New York Times has a long piece about childless women and men. This is a substantive issue because there are just too many people in American society who are not having children. I know. Unpopular viewpoint with the left. I love how at the very start, he tried to make this a partisan thing. Like, it's only the left that are against this. Ben, if you saw in the comment, well, it's not your video, it's someone else's video that uploaded, but... This is not a liberal or conservative thing. It's just a smart, rational thing to not want to have kids. And even right-wingers who said in the comments that they fervently love you and agree with everything you said disagree with you here. So stop trying to bring partisan politics in it when it has nothing to do with it. Also, it's not that big of a deal that people don't have kids. In fact, it's good that they don't have kids, which I'll get to later on. This is a true thing I'm going to say that is going to trigger the lebs by virtue of it being true. No. What you're going to say is nothing but your emotional religious garbage that most people online have completely dismissed already. Get with the times, regressive Ben. What you're stating is just your emotional feelings over the actual facts. And I'm going to actually provide some facts on why you shouldn't have kids later on. Americans are not having enough children. We're not having enough children to support our giant social welfare state. We're also not having enough children just generally because we're replacing ourselves at barely replacement rates. Europe is dying, Europe is falling apart. The reason Europe is reliant on mass immigration from the Middle East is because they don't have enough people to actually do the jobs. Actually, Ben, the Muslim migration in Europe the last bunch of years has nothing to do with a smaller population. It has to do with the fact of all of our interventions and wars in the Middle East, which, by the way, you fervently support, which led, to, which led to the destruction of a lot of these countries, which led people to migrate to Europe, and because of the EU not ha I mean, having open borders, by and large, they're allowed to get in even jihadists, basically, well, no problem whatsoever, and they could do their terrorism. It has nothing to do with people not having kids, Ben. It's your policies having major backfire. So maybe don't do interventions in the Middle East. Just a smart, rational idea. 
Then, of course, he said this is the same trap that America's fallen in, which actually is not because our population is actually growing because we actually are above replacement level in terms of fertility and, of course, immigration. So, no, we're not facing the same problems as the problems, I mean to say in quotation marks, as Europe is, which is actually a good thing that the populations hopefully would shrink. But now, of course, here is the meat of the video where he does his emotional garbage on why people should have kids as he uses his feelings over facts. Brace yourselves for a shitload of regression. The United States is falling into the same trap. Why? Because people have found meaning not in what does the future hold and building a better future, but in this sort of self-obsession, how can I live a more satisfying personal life? So the New York Times is this fawning article about a bunch of old people who don't have kids. Now you might think that that's sad, a bunch of old people who don't have kids. They don't have kids to visit them, they don't have grandkids to visit them. And in fact, there's a picture leading this piece of four old people sitting on a bench looking out into the ocean, right? Which is really depressing, just. Like I told you right off the bat, using his feelings. First off, Ben, what's so depressing about looking at ocean? The oceans are beautiful. Be on the Atlantic like I am a few miles away from the Atlantic. It's a beautiful sight to look at the beach when I'm on Ocean City. It's not depressing. It's a beautiful sight to look at until climate change and sea level rises takes over the eastern seaboard which I'm on. But hey, you deny climate change so that doesn't matter to you of course. And I'll get to the being lonely part later. In its sort of context, right? you put a child in that photo and suddenly it's charming, but without a child, it just looks like a bunch of old people that are soon gonna turn into tombstones. That's essentially what it looks like. And here's what the article says. The vast majority of American women have children, yet fewer women are deciding to become mothers. The fertility rate is at a record low. When we ask people who don't plan to have children about the reasons for an article in the upshot, the top answers were the desire for more leisure time, the need to find a partner, and the inability to afford childcare. I am so glad people are not having kids as much as often, thank God, because the plant needs less of us. But as you heard what he said, there are three main reasons why people today are not having kids as much. One, they want to enjoy their life more. Two, they don't have a partner. And three, they don't have the financial means to raise a child. All three of those things are very reasonable and very rational. And they are three main reasons why I would never have kids, most certainly not now. First off, Ben, I want to enjoy my life. I want to be able to enjoy every aspect of it. I want to be able to do YouTube all the time. I want to be able to hang out with my friends on Discord all the time and such. I would not be able to do all these things if I had a bastard child to take care of. I would lose a lot of my freedom to do what I want to do if I had a kid. So no, I value what I want to do in my life over having a kid. Second, I don't have a partner, nor am I looking either. It's not as fucking easy as you think to find someone to be with. Especially if you're a man, because women have very high standards and are very difficult to please. Well, most of the time. So that's another problem within itself. Although, funny enough, most right-wingers I run to on YouTube and Twitter regularly tell me I shouldn't breed. So, I kind of find it funny how we have another conservative flip-flop and say now I'm selfish for not having kids, when other times I'm told I should not have kids at all anyway. And finally, and the most main reason for me, I cannot financially provide for a child if I have one. And unlike you, who thinks most people like, or who are liberal or poor are just lazy moochers who just don't have it responsibility, I am being responsible enough to not have kids until I can financially provide for them. That's actually being smart, which you're against. You just want people to have kids indiscriminately, and then when they can't provide for them financially, you want to cut off social safety nets and welfare from them, leaving them to starve and die, effectively. That is being stupid, and that is being selfish. And also, we have climate change. We have overpopulation. The plant can't support all these billions of people. It's like, it's almost 8 billion now, and depend on the UN's, um range from the high end to the low end by things like the end of the century it could be as hot low as nine million I me mean nine billion or it could be as high as maybe almost 20 billion the planet cannot support all this and honestly the planet's population needs to be cut in half along with combat and climate change with green technology which all these things you are fervently against 
Now, all these things I mentioned are very reasonable, very rational, and very smart reasons why you should not have a kid. That Ben has regularly included some of his more far-right audience that still defend him, fervently deny at all costs. But no, the video gets even worse. Next, he was talking about a poll of women who chose to be career-oriented instead of being mothers, and also talked about women or people in their, like, their 60s and such that ch did not have kids and are happy about it, and he decided to completely shit the bed even worse than what I just described. Many women said motherhood had become more of a choice, and they were choosing to forego it, whether for, whether for personal or economic reasons. In response to that article and related one about a woman who is happily child-free, we heard from many older childless women and some older childless men reflecting on their lives without children. Many celebrated their decision. Some wondered what might have been. Others said they had moved from feeling heartbroken to feeling grateful. Yeah, Ben, most people who choose not to have kids for that long most likely would indeed be happy that they did not have kids. I know I most certainly would. Some might regret it. Some might just be indifferent, but there are going to be people, the vast majority of them, I say, who would enjoy life not having a kid. But now is when he completely shits the bed. Okay, now, let's just face a basic fact about humanity. Okay, basic fact about humanity. You will always justify the decisions you made. It's very rare to find human beings who look at the decisions they've made in their life and said, you know what? Really botched that one. That was a mistake. And I think the first step toward becoming a better human being is saying, I made a mistake and maybe I can do better. But people have a real stake in doubling down on the stuff that they've already done. Here are some of the comments. Joanne from Georgia. She is 62. Over my life of 62 years, I've gone from being heartbroken to relieved to proud that I never had children. Why would you be proud that you never had children? What sort of what sort of contribution to society have you made by not generating a second generation? Now, it's one thing if you obviously can't have children, if you have that sort of trouble. But to choose not to have children is an inherently selfish act. Now, what he just said was basically a more intelligent, although not really, way of saying, no, you actually don't know what makes you happy. You're just lying to yourself, basically. And I know what actually makes you happy, and that's why you should have kids. Ben. What your whole argument there was, that was selfish and emotional on your part. And also, Ben, there is no objective way to be happy. There, happiness is completely subjective. So it's not up to you to decide and tell and demonize people how they want to be happy. When people say they are happy, you should take them at their word. Nothing what you said here was a fact. Only your emotions and feelings. And also, I love how Ben said that you need to contribute to society and build a legacy by having kids. Ben, you're a nobody. I'm a nobody. 99.99% .99 of us are nobodies. There is nothing we can do in the world that will make us be remembered throughout time. You're going to be forgotten when you're dead. I'm going to be forgotten when I'm dead. We're all going to be forgotten when we're dead. And same goes for our kids. And no, it's not up to you to decide how we want to build our legacy. That's up to us. And if I did want to build a legacy, you know I would say? Don't have kids. We have climate change and overpopulation to deal with. We need to save the planet for us and future generations. So you know we don't go extinct. Now, you don't believe in climate change, but it doesn't matter. It's a fact it's happening, and we're going to suffer the results regardless if we do anything or not, but we need to do something to make it not as bad as it's going to be. So now, he decided to go and explain why he thinks it's selfish for you not to have a kid, and it's really, really bad. Again, this is a very controversial proposition in today's day and age. The reason it is a selfish act is because you are you are voluntarily disconnecting yourself from the future of the human species. You no longer have a stake in what happens next. The world stops turning the moment you die. Once you have kids, you start realizing that your decisions mean something more. Nothing changes human beings more than having children. Nothing makes you rethink the decisions that you've made in your life more than having children and deciding what to pass on to those kids. Nothing makes you care more about building a better society than having children. Nothing makes you more protective of the things that we have that are good than having children. 
Gee, Ben, that's kind of weird how you say having kids would make you want to protect things that are good, hence why you per deny climate change and a solution to fix it, which your kid would be much more affected by it than you will. Oh. Yeah, that's a pretty damn inconvenient fact I just pointed out to you. Also, Ben, counterpoint. Let's say, for example, me right now. I'm poor. Let's say I did somehow have someone to be with. Or just accidentally knocked someone up and had a kid. I can't afford them. And any woman I'd be with probably wouldn't be able to afford them either. And let's say we had that kid. Do you have any idea how expensive having kids are when you can't afford them? So, I would have, we would have this kid. The kid would be fucked over. And I and the mother would be fucked over. Because we wouldn't be able to financially provide for them. Which of course leads to misery. Which of course leads to crime. As poverty is the main reason for crime, which you fervently deny, and using up resources that we can't support and sustain ourselves anymore? No, Ben. Not having kids is not selfish. In fact, having kids when you can't financially provide for them or don't even want them, that's selfish because you're screwing your kids over. And yourself, too. And that's why I would never have kids unless I could financially provide for them. And even if, even if I could financially provide for them, that's still not a guarantee that I would have kids either. And I know what I'm going to say right now. You're going to call me a horrible murder and monster, but I don't care. It's the right thing to do. If I got someone knocked up accidentally, I would strongly, strongly pressure them to have an abortion. Because it's the smart, fiscally conservative thing to do that would help me the mother and the child from suffering any misery that would have been upon us that's not selfish that's smart what you want that's selfish but there's still more to this shitty ass video here we go and when you sacrifice all that because hey i had a good time and my kids weren't a pain in the ass at least i didn't have to deal with with little timmy's drug problem when he was 16 yes having kids is a risk but it's that risk that not only makes life worth living, it makes civilization worth preserving. Uh, no. Having kids is not the main reason why it's worth living. How we live is completely subjective to what we want. If you find having kids makes your life worth living, that's fine. But me and others who don't want to have kids, we don't think that. And we having fun with our life stuff, that's what makes it worth living for. So once again, you're putting your feelings and religious emotions into inconvenient facts. Okay, Carson from, from River Heights, he's 66, she's 66. She says, I'm a 66-year-old woman who chose not to have children, and I've never regretted it for a minute. Friends, lovers, professional colleagues, siblings, nieces and nephews, neighbors, and other people can be constants in a person's life too. Right, that means that you are basically mooching off of someone else's kids, implying that women who don't have children are doomed to loneliness is ignorant. Yeah, Ben, it is ignorant to assume that people who don't have kids are doomed to loneliness. Also, no, it wouldn't be mooching off their kids. It would be the other way around, the kids mooching off of them. Again, Ben, not everyone wants to be social. A lot of us, including me, we're introverts. We're loners. We like being alone. We love the solitude that it provides. And a lot of people are like that. And it's not objectively wrong or good. It's up to whatever the person wants to be. Deal with it. No, it's not. By poll data, it is certainly not ignorant. The vast majority of women want to have kids and they want to have kids for a reason. And just because human beings have an enormous capacity for self-deception and may want to suggest to themselves that everything is hunky-dory when they're 60 years old living at home with no one else there in a, in a house by themselves with no kids, yeah, good, good luck with that. Good luck with that. And then the fact the New York Times is pushing this is pretty telling. Okay, first off, Ben, it wasn't the New York Times pushing it. Unlike you, it wasn't pushing an agenda. It was an opinion article. They were talking to people who were in their 60s, had didn't have kids, and they were just asking them questions and how they feel about not having kids. And they answered it, and they said most of them, they enjoyed life and they were happy they did not have kids. That's not an agenda. That's not saying, oh, therefore, this is objective way how you should live. No, it's just an opinion article asking people what their opinions on how they enjoy their life. That's it. It's not promoting an agenda. Now you, you promote an agenda all the time, so you have to project onto others that they are promoting an agenda. He pushes such an agenda that around Mother's Day, he actually tweeted out that he asked his four-year-old daughter what 
he, she wanted to be when she was grown up. A mother or some sort of working career, and she chose mother. Ben, she's four. She doesn't know what she wants to do and doesn't comprehend what anything about this. Just like if you asked me what I wanted to do when I was four, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't know what I would say. I wouldn't comprehend anything of what you're talking about, probably. And I wouldn't be surprised if either you coached her into saying that because you have that much of an agenda. And like I said before, Ben, yes, there are many people who would enjoy being alone. And the fact that you fervently deny that shows how ignorant you are. The thought of me dying alone is a plus in my eyes. And also, Ben, if you are married to someone and you live with them for the rest of your lives, there's a very good chance that they're going to die before you, so you will end up being alone regardless. So your point is pretty much moot. So now his dumbass once again goes back to talking to one of these women who are in their 60s and enjoy their life not having kids. And, well, you already know what's going to happen. Retired and love it from the Oregon coast. I'm a retired woman, 66, and never had children. I went to college on the GI Build and always worked a white-collar job. Women like me were considered oddities when I was in my 20s and through, uh, through my 40s. Instead of having kids, I spent time traveling, owning my own home, and doing f very fulfilling volunteer work. I was fortunate to be able to retire at 65. I've never regretted being childless. This is fine. The real question is, why is the New York Times actually pushing this? And the answer is because the New York Times believes that this inherently self-absorbed culture is something good for the country. This is something we need to talk about. How do we instill a culture of purpose and meaning again in people that they want to contribute to the next generation and that they actually want to be part of the great chain of history that leads backward toward a time when people did not live in prosperity and decency with, with safety for their children, toward a time when people will live in ever-increasing prosperity and decency with a sense of meaning for their kids. Those are the conversations we need to be having. And that's not going to be happening if we are so focused on the triggering of the libs. Okay, all that stuff's just not that important. So once again, Ben, because he promotes an agenda, has to project it onto a New York Times opinion article on what people, how they should live their lives. Like I already said, Ben, it's not promoting an agenda. It was just asking people how they feel in their 60s not having kids. And guess what that woman's life story? I find that very admirable. That's something I honestly would kind of like to do, like volunteer work and stuff like that, although I probably wouldn't be able to do so. And travel around the world. And like I mentioned already earlier, there is no objective right way to how you live your life or happiness. That's up to you. You decide how you want to live your life and how you want to be happy. Don't let curmudgeon, prudish assholes like Regressive Ben here try to tell you what to do. And another thing, too, I forgot to add in throughout the video. I have personal experience with this. Like my mother, for example. She's not happy that she had me. In fact, all her life she told me it was the worst decision she ever made having me. <laughs> and same goes for other women, too. You having kids does not objectively make you more happier. It's up to you. Maybe if you have kids, maybe you would be happy. I, on your hand, would not, and many others would. And that no... If you say you're happy, no, I'm going to say you're not happy because you don't do what I think is right. And also, Ben, counterpoint, I am being responsible. I am being responsible for not having kids I can't financially provide for when I know for a fact, objectively, they're going to be worse off and me and any woman I was with. And also, they would have to deal with climate change more likely than me. And that is one reason why I unselfishly refuse to have kids. You, on the other hand, are a lunatic, religious fundamentalist, and an authoritarian that wants to control people's lives and tell them and demonize them to what to do. I don't think that. To any of you that's watching, you do what you want to make your life about. You decide what you want to be happy about. Now, unlike Ben, I actually will give some advice that would actually make your lives better. Don't have kids if you can't financially provide for them. That is a smart thing to do. And also unlike Ben, who would say, oh, just don't have sex and, and abstinence. No, that's something that you're never going to get over. It's a human desire. So you're going to fuck no matter what and make sure you use contraceptives. And if you do end up getting pregnant accidentally, get the goddamn abortion. It's smart and fiscally more conservative to do that instead of suffering you, your partner, and your kid in a life of misery. And that is a much better advice than Regressive Ben here can do. Fuck you, and fuck all of you that are going to call me anti-Semitic for this. 
Go fuck off with your aggressive crap and mind your goddamn business and let people enjoy their lives and how they make themselves happy. You curmudged prudes.